Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast, the Young and Awakening podcast. I, and I am here today with Belinda Yanda. And this is a podcast for and about spiritually awakening teenagers. So we're going to talk about spirituality today. Surprise. First, I'm going <laughs> to welcome Belinda. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you so much. And I'm thrilled and honored to be here with you yeah. today and all of our listeners. Yeah, and among other things, we're going to talk about human design, but Lin Belinda is the expert in that, and she will share a lot more with us. But first, I'm going to read her bio so you know who she is and all the things that, that she does. So, Belinda Yanda is a passionate explorer of life and consciousness. Belinda intuitively guides and supports her clients, stepping into their own extraordinary mastery and authenticity. Using human design and the gene keys, she illuminates how they can best understand and activate their energetic soul blueprint to embody their inner gifts and talents. Belinda has studied a myriad of practical modalities and esoteric spiritual teachings, including human design, BG5 Institute, Gene Keys, Energy Medicine, Angelic Reiki, Crystal Therapy, and the Sophia Code Mystery School. Having practiced meditation, mindfulness, and yoga for more than 20 years, She's devoted to assisting the physical body during this time of powerful expansion through blessing ceremonies and crystalline activations, including breath work, energy medicine, essential oil, and crystal therapy. And Belinda also has a master's degree from Florida International University in linguistics and education. So that's a whole lot, Belinda. That's really <laughs> exciting. Thank you. And, yeah, and I would really love to know, and my, uh, I'm sure my listeners would too, and our listeners would love to know about uh, how you came to do this exciting work that you do now. Can you share a bit about the background? Yeah, I, um, you know, I've had a lot of different parts of my journey, so I'm going to just kind of fast forward to the bigger awakening. I had a, I had a, a, a softer awakening in right, right after college. And um, my boyfriend and I broke up and I was devastated at the time. <laughs> but what it did is inspire me to create my new path. And I ended up leaving Florida and I went to Europe and I traveled in Europe. And then I ended up traveling for almost 15 years of my life teaching. Um, so I, I consider that an awakening. And that's kind of what I want to say to your audience is that you know, anything that's pushing you into your authentic, your authentic you, your authentic divine nature, like you're not listening to everybody else tell you what to do. You're making your own path, whether everybody likes it or not, or you know what I mean? And I'm not saying you have to be a rebel. I'm just saying you have to follow what's true for you. And that, that aligned me with opening up more to, to what I wanted to do in the world, as opposed to just kind of staying and following the same path or trajectory of my peers at the time. So that, so that I'm so very blessed to have had that experience. And of course I traveled around the world, so I feel very gifted by that. But then later, much later, um, I, yeah, you know. Can I just ask how old were you when leaving college? Because we don't have the same school system here in Europe. So it could be nice to know, just have a, like a reference yeah. point. Yeah, it was, it was in my um, 20s, like my early 20s, 23, yeah. 24, yeah. Okay, great, yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, I feel so lucky to have had that experience. I mean, you think everything at the time is like, oh, it's so tragic, your boyfriend breaks up with you, right? Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but then it's the biggest gift of your whole life. And I, I've thanked him today. I'm like, thank you so much, you know? Um, and then the, the, the part that's taken me onto a really deep, deep spiritual practice, I would say the last seven to eight years, again, like after my marriage, um, kind of really did some deep soul searching, right? And again, I had been practicing yoga and stuff, but I really needed to get a lot deeper than um, what I was what I was doing before. And this is kind of what expanded my um, consciousness to look for a deeper meaning in life. And what that led me to was the gene keys and human design and understanding my energetic blueprint, which gave me what is kind of my true path, my authenticity. 
and alignment. And everybody has this within them. And you do this instinctually. I'm just going to show you what it looks like on a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, and that's so exciting. But Belinda, did, how was your own teen, teen years? Were you already spiritually awakened back then? Or do you see anything from that time that has anything to do with what you do now? Or does it feel like two separate lives? I, I mean, I really, at the time, I was like, did everything my friends wanted to do, I was kind of living in everybody's energy. Do you know what I mean? And so exactly. I, I know <laughs> I did that for many years, even, even after that first, but at least I was traveling by myself. So I was by myself making my own decision. But what happens to my particular energy field, I'm deeply affected by the people around me. So had I had this information then, I think I would have been um, inspired to make church, church choices that were more aligned for me, you know, as opposed to kind of doing what everybody else was doing because I wanted to be with my friends, if that makes sense. Completely. And that was actually also what I wanted to ask you. If what, what would, which tools you have, do you have now that you wish you would have known back then? Can you expand a bit more on that? Would that just be the human design blueprint or would it, how would you have liked to have some tools back then looking back? Or maybe you feel it was fine. Oh no, I would do it differently. <laughs> and I mean, then I had a great, a great teenage year, a lot of ups and downs, but um, nothing really disastrous. I just think I could have made a lot better choices. I didn't always make the best choices for myself. Um, I was a pretty good student, but I could have been, you know, I don't know, who cares? But the point is, I actually found, I did a lot of practices before I did human design, but because human design is your unique blueprint for you, your path, your destiny, your divinity, your truth, that's what gave me the tools and the skills to always come back, always come back, always like course correct, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. Oh, I was going that way, but that's not really my way to go. So go this way. You know what I mean? Whereas a lot of other systems give you great practices, but you, you just don't know if those practices are particularly aligned for you, if that makes sense. That, yeah, and that's so exciting. And we're so lucky that you're going to share a reading with us today. So we've asked Belinda to, to do like, a, a sh like show how it works with a client we found. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we found <laughs> a teen, teenage girl who's 14. So we're going to do the reading with her later. She's not here, but we have her, her information and you're going to explain a bit more about how that works. So we can all see how that works with the human design and, and what we can really use that for personally and by knowing that for someone else, knowing their energetic blueprint. So that's really exciting. And what I would really, is there, is there any more and more things about your background you would like to share that you feel is important to share with the teens? Or do yeah. you, yeah. Yeah, there's, it's not so much my background, but what I want to kind of speak to this generation, they're here to shift the entire planet. They're here to shift the paradigm. All the old stuff is dismantling because it's not working. Our, you know, our political systems, I mean, on and on our health systems, especially in the US, I know Europe is a little bit better and Scandinavia is a little bit better, but I mean, a lot better maybe, who knows, right? But, um, but our systems really need to be completely restructured, reorgs and created from, the, from a, new, a new higher frequency where everybody's being taken care of, right? And everybody's equal, we're all here working together in harmony. And because this is such a big time of the shift on this planet is really important for teens to awaken and have more clarity at a much younger age than, than maybe I did. You know what I mean? Um, because they're gonna, they're, they're creating the new systems, if that makes sense. So that's kind of, that's why I believe this information is critical for this generation because it helps you stay aligned. Oh, oh, this is how, this is my type. This is how I make decisions. This is my intuition. Um, and gives them guidance and a pathway to follow and experiment with. Yeah, so I also feel when you talk this, I get the word, they get like a green card to follow the new, to do the new instead of just following 
what have always been done, what they might feel not is not right, but what they are often told they have to do and it has to be this way, but they can feel that there's something else and then really to be supported in bringing that new in. That's really valuable and really, really exciting, Linda. I know, thank you. And as you were talking, I felt it all too. You know, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. giving them permission to move in alignment in their truth and their yeah. clarity. And, and, and the parents are uh, obviously, mo and many parents are getting on board with like, yeah, I gotta let my, my kid figure this out. I've gotta let my kid go my way. My kid, does, if he doesn't wanna be a doctor, that's okay. Or if she doesn't wanna do this, you know, she doesn't want to have a, a family, that's okay. You know, whatever it is, that's their path. You know, they want to be a dancer. They want to be a singer. Who, you know what I mean? It's giving them the opportunity to follow what is aligned for them. Yeah. Yeah, so many parents have traditionally guided the, the children along the same path as they have ch chosen for themselves, right? right? To keep them safe. So yeah, that is also what I hear from a lot pair of parents uh, that are waking up to really see the mastery of their teenage children and also their small children. So this is so exciting and I can't wait to see the chart you made for this girl, Jane. <laughs> we call her Jane, she's anonymous. <laughs> we promised her uh, that she could be that. So, but will you explain us a bit more about human design or is it easier that we do it at the same time when we look at the chart? No, I mean, I have a few slides. Why don't I show you a few yeah. slides? You want to let me share? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we need to explain them a bit for our listeners who are not having one at a video. Okay. okay. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. But can I sh show the slides anyway for the people that do have video? Yes, of course. Can you share or do I need to do something? Yeah, you have to allow me to share. I think you... You got it? I think it's um, share when you click on share screen. Oh, I know the little green arrow. You got it. Did you get it? Okay. Yeah. I think I yeah, have, I have clicked, so you, you should be able yeah, to share. Yeah, Can perfect. You? Thanks, sweetie. And now I'm here. <laughs> okay, yay. Did it work? Let me let me try. Let me try again. Thank. Here we go. Okay, and for I'll I'll try to do my best of like yeah. talking through it with people. Um, just a little background on the information. There's many um typologies where, um that Meyer Briggs, the Enneagram, that help people understand their type. But because this, the reason that this is different, it's, um, it's from the chakras. It's actually your energy body, right? The 64 Chinese hexagrams of the I Ching, the Kabbalah, the tree of life. So it's this amalgam of all these ancient wisdom practices into, a, um, <laughs> into an algorithm that creates their particular chart. So, so what we get is four different types of beings that you, everybody's one of these types of beings. And there's generators, manifesting generators, projectors, manifestors, and reflectors. And if I remember correctly, Matilda, you're a generator, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. And we're gonna read the chart of Jane, who is also, oh, she's a projector like me. So what the system shows you to do is that we all have very unique paths, like the generators and the manifesting generators. They have this very powerful life force energy and workforce energy. They're here to work and they're here to choose jobs or occupations or service or whatever they're doing. That's regenerating them, giving them energy back. They're passionate about. It. And if they aren't passionate about it, then they won't feel that regeneration. So it's a signpost for them of whether the work that they're doing or the school that they're in or the community that they're in is right for them. Does that make sense? So they know if their energy, if their energy is feeding back into them. Yeah. Um, 
And I just want to say, Belinda will help us later to see if you're watching this and thinking, oh, what type am I? Belinda will help us you later to find your, your type. So you can go and look it up yourself and then you can look at this and this will make more sense because you know which one you are. So don't worry, we will get into that. Yes, please continue, exactly. it's so exciting. <laughs> I will send you the link, for, I promise, right. Um, oh, well, we can actually show the link um, in, the in the chat or yeah. In, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I will just post it with when we upload the video or, this, uh, or in sound SoundCloud, so. Great. And so again, I'm just going to go over these. You can see each each type has a different um, aura, right? So all of this energy stuff, we don't really see. Some people do see this, of course, but we don't. So this information really helps you kind of understand how your energy is working. So generators and manifesting generators have this kind of very soft, welcoming energy, right? That is always inviting people to, to bring things to them, right? So everything's always coming to you. Everything you need is always coming to you, right? You just got to decide if it's aligned for you or not. And the name of the game in human design is don't go into your head and make the decisions. Find the decisions deep within your body because your body has infinite possibilities um, to receive that knows what's good for you. Whereas your mind is um, often conditioned by what your schools are telling you, what your teachers are telling you, and your environment, your parents, your friends. So it, the information in your head often gets muddled by, by the people you're with in your environment. So again, you have to come back to your body to find your intuition to how to move forward. Um, and just real quickly, I'm going to go through the other types. We're going to do this again later. Projectors have this kind of very focused energy, and that's what Jane has, and I have. And we're here to kind of lead and guide and balance and harmonize the energy of others. So we have like a backdoor job that nobody really sees. So it's really important for us to be with the right people and the right place because we're the amplifiers. We're amplifying other people's energy, the generators and the manifesting generators. So if we're not with the right people, we're kind of giving our, our gifts and talents to the wrong environment or the wrong situations. Well, wrong isn't the right word, but what's not aligned for us. And then that'll make us tired, right? And then that's how we will know, oh, and there's no right, wrong, good or bad. This is all an experiment of discovery. And you become more masterful every day when you have awareness on what's working and what's not working, right? Um, Projectors are about 20% of the planet. Manifesting generators and generators together are about 70% of the planet. Mm. And then manifestors have this kind of very fortified, strong order, and they're only 9% of the planet. And what they do is they're the initiators, the kickstarters. They're the ones that are getting all the big ideas out, out, out into the world. They, they find the generators and the manifesting generators to to do the work or to help them out and then they move on to the next project they're not here to really work you know the typical day job either and that is because they don't have that sacral energy either like the projector they both don't have that sacral defined energy um and it's you know and i don't want to say the generators or the manifesting generators have to have a day job either because i do believe the whole world is shifting but I just want to say that the manifesting generators and the generators do have this powerful life force energy. So if they're not using it towards something they love, they will also get tired because they're not, they have too much energy that's not being used for the good the, of the, you know, of themselves and for the community, right? Um, and then the last one is the reflectors. Well, reflectors are completely open centers, and you can see all the centers. I'll show you on another slide right here. Um, these are these are all the names of the centers too, and I, I, we can do that a little bit later. But um, the reflectors are are just reflecting back to their community, their tribe, their people, their environment, their school. Um, what's working and what's not working, right? They're the barometer of of the health. So they're always showing everybody what's really going on. So it's really important for, 
for reflectors, and they're only 1% of the planet. They're very unique beings. And I know a lot of them for some reason. It's very crazy. I have one of my best friends and his son is a reflector. Um, they're very creative. They're very, they love people, but they also can get exhausted by being around people a lot. So they really need to take breaks. And that's the last thing that I'm gonna minute, mention. Your type helps you understand how to, how to respond to decisions in alignment with your body and your energy system. And your type also gives you what's open and what's defined, which is your nature and your nurture, right? So you have open centers, that's your nurture and you have defined centers and that's your true nature. And then it also gives you <laughs> um, a, a, kind of like what we said before, how your auras are and what it feels like to be um, with that energy system. I don't think we have a lot, a lot of time right now to go through all, but I'll just read the centers. They're a little bit yeah. different than the chakras. I'm not gonna explain them because you can, this is easy information to get online and I'll give you some of those links. Um, but they're similar to the chakras. So if you do any yoga, you kind of have heard them before. The, the top one at the head is the head center, inspiration. Then the ajna, the third eye, um, is conceptualization. The throat center, of course, is communication and manifestation. The G center in the middle is our, our magnetic monopole, which we're always attracting um, that energy to ourself, which is direction, love, and our identity. Heart center is your ego and your willpower. The spleen over there to the left is your instinctual survival skills and your intuition. In the middle is that what I keep talking about is that sacral center, your life force energy. And that's the energy that I keep mentioning. That's the creative energy. You need to work. You need to create families or create something, <laughs> right? Because you have this powerful energy. You don't have to have a family. I'm just saying that's... That's what it's for, right? You can create projects, you can create um, things for your community, for your classes. And then the sacral energy over here is, I mean, I'm sorry, the solar plexus energy over here is for your emotions and your feelings. And at the bottom, we have the root center, which is the fuel to get things done. So there you go. And there are nine centers. Yes, yeah, so exciting. Yes, is there, is there more background or are we going into Jane now? Um, I, think, I think it might be just easier just to move into Jane and yeah. then um, if you have any questions or we can yeah. elaborate after that. Okay, so let we me have that We have her, her chart to look at, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to pull that up right now. Okay, good. Are you looking at it? Yes. Yay. So this is Jane's chart. And see, it looks a little bit different than what we were looking at. And the first thing that I want to say about Jane, and I'm going to go back and talk about her projector, wait for the invitation, success and bitterness. These four, these four um, things all come together. The type, the strategy, the signature, and the not self. So if they have a type that this will be the same for all projectors? Yes, okay. yes, yeah. right. That's a projector quality. Those are projector oh. qualities right there. Yeah. And I have my own little flavor of that um, because the world is evolving so much and this generation is evolving so much and this generation is evolving much quicker. So I'm going to kind of add a little bit of my own opinion to it. But... Projectors, again, have this open sacral, means open life force energy. So they're really here to amplify others and balance and harmonize the energy and guide the energy, right? And that's a really backdoor job that they don't even often know that they're doing until they awaken to this information. And then when they do, they're like, wow, okay, no wonder I'm tired all the time. Well, you're tired, yeah, because it, especially if you're at school with a lot of people, you're you're balancing and harmonizing a lot of energy, even as a young person, right? You're still doing it, right? Um, so it's really important for projectors to take time alone, to be in their own, or to be in their own space, because then they can come back to their self, right? Their own energy. And they're not 
kind of like working, if that makes sense. Um, so, and this is really hard for projectors to learn. And I again, didn't learn this until much later in life because projectors often really love to be around people because they have this very kind of focused aura. So, and they're busy harmonizing, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's very hard sometimes for them to take time to be alone. But once they understand the benefits of being alone, they often feel way better because they'll be with their friends or be with their family. They go home alone, kind of recover, come back recharged, and then they can do it again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Otherwise, they kind of burn themselves out. So does it, so will it influence how much they need to be alone depending on who they are with? Is it like if there's more dense energy, heavy energy, sad, or will they need more time alone or, yeah. I'm sorry that I was feeling that again. Um, yeah, thank you. That's a brilliant question. And yes, it is completely true um, in a thousand different ways, right? You know, if it's, it's really fun, easy energy, it, they could definitely stay do that most of the day, but they're still going to get tired. You know what I'm saying? Because their energy is, again, it's like the amplifier, right? Um, but if the energy is really challenging and emotional, and let's just say anger or frustration or intense, some intensity, it will, it can <laughs> be a lot harder for them. And I mean, my, my gentle suggestion is feel into when you need to walk away from things or when you need your own, you know, figure out constructive or helpful ways to be able to get out of a situation that doesn't feel that comfortable. And, and sometimes you can't leave your family, right? Or you can't leave your friends. And I get that. But you can also go to the bathroom or you can take a little break or you can say, or go breathe some fresh air or whatever you can do to kind of ground yourself back into your own energy and clear clear others' energy out of your energy field. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes so much that sense. That was a great question, thank you. And it's really important for projectors. It is for everybody, especially if they have a lot of open centers, but it's a little bit um, more important for projectors because they're, again, they're amplifying and balancing and harmonizing energy. Um, okay, you want me to keep going? Yes, please. Okay, and this is the one that I've changed a little bit. It says, wait for the invitation. And I wanna say this to any teenage projectors out there, you don't have to wait to be invited for a job or for an event. It's nice to be invited. Projectors love to be invited. And we say this, that the reason that the strategy is wait for an invitation is because then you know that you're being asked to come into the situation and there's an energetic opening but you have to decide if it's the right invitation or not, right? Because it's your job to discern and know whether it's good for you or not. And that comes back to your decision-making authority. But what I feel, and I, and I think that's a fine, fine guidance, but what it feels like to me is when the right opportunities or the right invitation show up, it feels like full body recognition, like your body lights up and like, wow, and you're all excited, you know, like, actually, Matilda invited me for this interview. That felt really good, but my whole body's like, oh, okay, right? <laughs> um, so that's what it feels like, the recognition, and it's really important for projectors to be in spaces where they're recognized for their gifts and talents. Again, otherwise, they're wasting or giving their energy away to places that, that aren't aligned for them. So that's super important. So I would say recognition is really important as a strategy. If, if they're forcing themselves into situation, they're often forcing themselves into opportunities where they're going to have a challenging experience that they might not really appreciate. And, that's, and it'll be a great lesson, but it might yes. not be. So what I'm thinking of so being a teenager and you just come from the age where you just had to do what your parents said all the time, it will take some time to really get used to, again, that you're allowed to choose for you as a young person, that you really can say no to some invitations and that you don't have to do everything you're asked to do. So that's really exciting. That is really a journey also back into your, your own sovereignty that you're allowed to say no and say yes when it feels good. 
But I love that. That I love. I really love that you're bringing that up because it feels so important. Wow, and that's so brilliant. Thank you for bringing that up, Natalia. I love that. You're right. That we we often as teenagers don't have the purview or the the like you said the um, the sovereignty to say no to some things, right? And we're kind of uh, I like. Uh, pushed into situations or led into situations that really aren't that great for us. And again, it's, and again, it's just trying to figure out how to be in those experiences with, with, with being grounded and not kind of absorbing the energy um, around them. Right. And just being present, being present and open but not taking on the energy, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's a great lesson. Thank you. Right. I forget about all those things, right? <laughs> because you're out of it. Yeah, you know, you can choose for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I traveled around the world by myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so great. I love this. Yeah. The last two things I want to just finish about the projectors is like when they're in the right environment, when they're in the right classes, when they're in the right people, and this is actually really easy for teenagers to understand. They feel successful. They, again, have that recognition. People are acknowledging them. Oh, you're so smart. Oh, you're so this. You're so whatever, right? Um, and when they're not, they're, they get frustrated and eventually get bitter. So that's what the not self is. And it's just kind of a signpost to say, hey, maybe I'm not in the right place with the right people. And we're all gonna have experiences that aren't fun. That's just part of life, right? So I'm not saying every time a challenging experience comes up, you gotta run away. That's, I'm just saying it's there are opportunities for growth and for learning, right? What's good, what works, and what are the right places for you. But it is, it is really helpful for teens to learn this process early so they can create more opportunities for success for themselves, as opposed to just creating situation after situation, which kind of, I'm not gonna say disastrous, but what isn't, what it isn't fun, right? Yeah. And also really good to know if you feel yourself getting bitter over and over, that there's something going on there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Isn't that perfect? Yeah. Again, had I had this information in high school, I might have chosen a lot differently, <laughs> right? Even college, I would have chosen, I would have completely revamped my college career, you know, because I did have a choice, but I was choosing by what everybody was telling me, not what I loved, you know? Yeah. Um, no oh, mercy. Anyway, you get it, right? Yeah, that's such a great, such a great, such a great experience to share here with things that are in that process right now of of uh, choosing what do you want to do with your future and really feeling right. that that they can yeah. have they they have the permission to just choose what they want to do, and that's and kind that's of like so a whole other experience. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was talking over you, but but you're right. I'm so excited. That is so beautiful. And it, the only thing, the guidance that I can give on that is do some deep soul search, get your chart, do some deep soul searching and kind of make list or whatever, talk with a friend or talk with a family member that you really trust, talk it out with them and say, this is what I really love. This is what I'm passionate about. And this is what I want to study. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because if your heart is into it, it's going to make it a lot easier and just follow your heart. That's the easiest thing to do. Keep following your heart, right? and what resonates with your heart. Um, okay, we're, we're kind of running out of time and I really wanna read you Jane's last page of her life theme down here. Um, but let me just tell you real quick for emotional authority, it says right here, that's your decision-making authority. And if you have emotional authority, that means you have this defined emotional solar plexus. And that means to make the big decisions in life about relationships, moving, schools, those big decisions that are going to affect you for a long while, it's really important for people with emotional authority to get clarity through their emotions, right? Don't make snap decisions because if you're happy, you might say yes to stuff that isn't that great for you. Or if you're really low and not feeling that great, you might miss those opportunities that are. So for these big decisions, it kind of helps to get a little journal out and say, what's it feel like today? Oh, it feels great. What's it feel like tomorrow? Oh, 
And the cumulative checking in with your emotional body will give you clarity of it's a yes or it's a no. And your decision-making authority is a sacral, right? We already talked about that. It was so different. But um, I, was, I was just thinking when you were talking, this is such a great advice for a teenager if they're both their parents are generators because I'm so com I'm generated and completely different I would like if I didn't knew that I would be like but yeah. what is the answer go <laughs> check in <laughs> so that's so brilliant yeah because you think you assume everybody has the same decision making authority yeah. as you and they don't and there's there's lots of different associates you have the easiest one sacral authority emotional is the slowest kind of most complicated one. Spleen, Jane has the spleen over here too. Spleen is a really click, quick, fast, hot, intuitive, intuitive hit, which is what I have, which is also challenging in the sense it's so fast that you miss it sometimes. Um, but so I want has both? I want to say, yeah, Jane does have both, but the emotional one will trump because it's stronger the spleen, but I wanna just say this little number over here, this, this channel 5710, these are her strengths, right? Anything that's a complete channel that's connecting one center to the other center, 63, four up here, 64, 47, 10, 57, 49. These are her strengths. These are her gifts and talents. These are, these are the things that she's here to express during this lifetime and explore and find mastery, right? Um, but this 57 is the strongest intuitive channel in all of the chart. So if she is aware of it now and she uses it, she could use that to make good decisions, if that makes sense. And then the big things, where does she wanna go to school or what does she wanna study or relationships? I would, um, again, get clarity through her emotional body, if that makes sense. Hope that makes sense. Yeah. That's so beautiful. I just I got so moved. She can use her intuition. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And that one's so strong. Yeah. My sister has it. And it's so funny because she doesn't do a lot of spiritual um, studies. And I'll, I'll give her intuitive information. She's like, I know that. I know that. <laughs> and she does because she has that 57 gate. You know what I mean? And it used to kind of bother me. I'm like, how do you have all that intuition? And then I looked at her chart and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, but that's a really good point, Matilda. Like, especially about the decision making thing. I remember because mine is spleen. When I learned that other people were emotional and mine's, mine's hot and fast and emotional is much slower. <laughs> that I needed to not put pressure on everybody else to make fast decisions. I was like, why are they taking so long? Why are they so slow, right? But they're slow because they need to be slower, right? So it's fascinating, isn't it? How much we think yeah, everybody- That's so helpful. Mm. Yeah. So great. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let you ask me some questions, but I wanna read, her life theme, and you can read her life theme down here. It says incarnation cross, right angle cross of penetration. And these are her first four codes up here, 51, 57, 54, and 53. And together, they kind of give you the strongest um, gates energy that you are expressing, right? Your life purpose, your life work, your evolution, and your radiance. Those, those are the combination of what the energy is. So we're always kind of Evol that's where we're evolving in, in, in these areas. So I'm just gonna read this because I love it so much. It's called Penetration. With your son in gate 51, you have the means to shock sleepy people into a state of awareness about their presence and attitudes. You read into people because she has this intuitive, this in deeply intuitive um, gate and channel, right? You read into people their life intentions quickly. If those people insist their life is different than what you perceive, you will, you will give them a sharp poke that shocks them into a new reality. You are fascinated by the mystery of life and will try almost anything to find out what life is all about. You derive great interest and amusement 
from prodding people to see how they react. And prodding is kind of like, ah, ah. <laughs> it is fun. And it, a note of caution, and it says this here, um, you can shock people and they might not be ready for it and they might be really uncomfortable and they might respond in like, in a frustrated or angry way, right? So yeah. it's best, you know, depending on how well your relationship is with the with, with whoever you're giving this guidance to, right? My sister does this also. <laughs> um, um, to be invited, like if if you say, if M Matilda, you say, oh, Belinda, can you give me some guidance on that? And then you have asked me for it, so then I can give you information. So when you're invited to offer guidance, it works yeah. better. <laughs> then you can give the shocking news. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I think that's a good example for Jane. If they have some guidance for somebody, they could just say, hey, Matilda, I have some guidance for you. Are you open or interested? You know, and then you could say yes or no yeah. before I off before I gave it. Right. Yeah. So it's 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 I think it's really entertaining and fun. It sounds really fun to me, but I think it's, it's also mastery. And making sure you're offering this to the right people so that you're not um, always kind of like jabbing people, if that makes a sense, okay. you know. It sounds also really powerful and like something that's needed in this time. Now she James 14 and it's like the time when you start to go out more and more and share it with more and more new people, not just your family, right? You, you come out and share your talents and abilities with more people. So it sounds really like an, a powerful place to be, like a very powerful blueprint to have, to come out and be that one, like pointing. Right, I agree. And I, again, I'm getting all, I'm feeling that all over. And what it feels like to me, like you said, is like a lot of humanity right now needs, is asking to be awakened. You know what I mean? Not openly, <laughs> but, and then she's the person that's gonna be like, I'm here, I'm ready to help you. You know what I mean? Um, but it's also refining and mastering your intuition, yeah. right? Because you have this super strong intuition, but you gotta make sure you get, you're getting clear intuition also. And yeah. just to- So Jane can use that, but, but really practicing knowing yeah. when it's the intuition and really be connected to that. Yes. It's beautiful. I, the last thing I wanted to mention on the chart, and we didn't have much time to talk about this, but when the, when the, um, when the centers are colored, that means they're defined, right? So yeah. Jane has a, a defined head, a defined Ajna, defined solar plexus, root and spleen, right? These are her consistent energies that she wakes up with every day that she can rely on. This is how she moves in the world, right? With this consistent energy. And these gates that she has on each center that are activated, the colors right here, um, well, is how she expresses herself. And then the openness, the white center on the throat, the white center on the ego, and the white center in the sacral, are where she's experiencing the energy of her environment, her family, her friends, wherever she is. So that's not her energy. And that's again, where you are mastering and finding wisdom through your experiences with other people. So the easiest way to understand white, which is open and defined, which is a color, is nature and nurture, mm -hmm. right? Nature is the colored defined centers that you wake up with every day and nurture are the white centers. And some of us have a lot of white centers and some of us don't. In fact, because Jane's a, um, a projector, she has a lot of definition for a projector. So it's, it's really, it's nice and interesting to have that much definition as a projector. Yeah. It's very powerful. So exciting. I really love this. So, do you want me to go on to the questions, or is there more around? Yeah. No, okay. I think that's good. So, can you unshare? Yes. Yeah, super. That was that was really mind blowing. I really love that, and 
And let us know if you can use this information when you also get to your own chat, not just Jane, but everyone, because I really thought it was exciting. And I can really see how not just the teenagers can use it, but also the parents or professionals. So if you're working with, with teens or children even, uh, or as a parent, so then you should really be able to use this on your child, right? Right, by knowing this. What is, what is your experience in that, Linda? Yeah, I have like two things to say. I wanna say first about counselors or guidance people in, in high schools or in you know, schools with teenagers. Um, the information is so useful because then you're not pushing students and teenagers the wrong way. You know what I mean? You have some, some guidance on what's aligned for them you, and you can share that with them and then they can figure it out for themselves as opposed to just like the cookie cutter, everybody has to do it the same way, right? Which isn't true and it doesn't work, right? And then you're, let's just say I'm a projector and I'm acting like a generator, then I have to figure that out later in life and unwind all that that I that wasn't aligned for me, right? So I do really believe that the, it does help counselors and guidance people in, um, in school. And then I just read this week um, three charts of, and they're, and they're older, they're in their 20s, but um, a brother and two sisters, and I know the mother. And they didn't know anything about each other, of course. So it's just for the siblings to have information about each other is huge. The, the, the children, the mother to have the information about the children is like mind blowing because she figured out all of their life themes. She's like, oh, they're just exactly like that, right? And their energy types are so different, which explained a lot to her too, because the mother's on a path and she knows a lot, right? Um, and then it also, I feel like for the, these uh, adults, um, it just confirms to them, well, this is what I, I knew, but I didn't understand, right? And now I have a blueprint or a pathway to kind of follow that'll help me move more towards what is my truth and clarity. So yeah, I think it's great. And it's helped me even with, as far as compassion with my my mother, my father, my sister, my friends. Um, yeah, I can really, I really love that, Belinda. I also get this feeling like if you're a teacher and you see one child that you will know more about how can they be motivated or if they're not making interaction, is it because one thing or the other and really get to know them and also to know that there might not be anything wrong if they're not just like really, really productive productive all day it might just be another type they might just have another blueprint it's not because they're wrong so i really feel how this also in the family can can like dissolve some of the judgment because we sometimes think we have to be the same also what you said about the cookie cutter so sometimes we're like why is he sleeping all the time i can just do all this and all that all day and, and why is he or she not doing the same as i am and then judge that as wrong. I really feel that, that that has such a great potential for the understanding of each other. That's so beautiful. No, and that's brilliant. Thank you for saying that. And that's actually what came up with the, the family that I just recently did because two of them, two of the girls are projectors and their brother's a manifesting generator. So he can work all day, all night, all week. Whereas the girls really need to take a break, you know, and, and, what happens when projectors are with manifesting generators, they just end up copying, right? Without taking care of themselves. Yeah. Okay. So if more teens or parents or professionals want to learn about this, how can they, how can they learn more about this human design? Yeah. Well, I'm developing a, a course, a short course for get to know, you know, your authentic blueprint for teens and um, young adults. And I, I, the course is already ready. It's just, I've, um, I have to adapt it a little bit for the audience. Um, and that I'll put on my website and I, I can post my website. I can also give you the link for everybody to do their own chart. Yes. And, and again, if they, if they know anybody at their school that is interested in offering a workshop, I'm happy to do a workshop for, a class on Zoom um, 
you know, we could do anywhere from 10 to 20 people in a class. 20 is a lot if we're doing everybody's charge. Yeah. If we're not doing everybody's charge. Um, so it depends. But yes. I yeah. Do. So we will definitely, we will share your contact information if they want to get it. Also, if they want to get a reading from you. Uh, and you also mentioned that they can go and look up the charts themselves. So what would they need of information? What information do you need when you, when you look up a chart? Like what do you put in there to get out the reading? Yeah, no, that's a good question. And there's many places you can do charts. Some you pay for and some you don't. But there's also free places. Um, you need your birth information um, because it's, it's why it's, we use the birth information is because this is how your energy centers were aligned when you were moving through the stars and the cosmos, right? And it's, it's much more than just astrology. Um, and, you know, it, a little bit has of it is from astrology because it's the alignment of the planets, which flavor each code. Um, it's th the one that I use often. It's called humandesignamerica.com. But, but, and again, I'll give you this link, but you just put your birth information in there and your time and your place. Yeah. So the time, it is important because it can change your chart if you were, you know, depending on when you were born. But if you don't have the exact time, you can just um, try to intuitively guess mm -hmm. an approximate time. Yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's so exciting. And what do you have of recommendations? Do you have any advice if you're, if you're just ready to dive, if there's some that's just ready to dive into this human design? Is there something they have to consider before going into this? I feel like if they are and they can they can reach out to me, I'll send them their chart and I'll send them some links to get started with. Because there's a lot of information online and it's a lot to kind of sift through. And I could just give you some really clear links to start with. Um, and I do think doing a little bit of self-study before you dive into it helps you understand because it's a very deep system and it has a lot. It tells you the best places to live. I mean, there's so much information in the system. Um, what kind of, how you should eat. Um, so yeah, doing a little research to getting a basic knowledge before you start a class is helpful. Yeah, so great. And you do give readings as well. So we will leave your, your, your email and your website so people can connect with you directly if they need to if they're curious so if the, is there any last thing you want to share with us before we wrap up Linda? no i'm just thrilled and honored that so many teenagers and young people are awakening to their truth and interested in following a new path that they're creating for themselves because that's how we're going to be able to work together. Humanity is one, right? By everybody kind of content and in alignment with who they are here to be. And I just, I love it. And I'm just thrilled and honored to support anybody that's ready to step into that much of their divinity. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. That's so beautiful, Belinda. I love it. So thank you so much for being here with us and we will leave all your contact information so, so people can get in touch with you. And it's been such a pleasure to have you here today. And thank you, Matilda. Good luck to all your listeners. And again, I just love your platform and I'm thrilled you're doing this for this audience. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.